calm moments. Now, earlier on, before we went in for a short uh, commercial break, we were talking about, she was telling us about chimpanzees, and it was very interesting. And uh, I was yet to ask her best moment with, with the chimpanzees, because everything she has said is actually good. But what is that one special moment in her life that she has enjoyed? So, Miss Lily, please tell us that one moment, the very, very best of the best moments while working with the chimpanzees. I think for me, there is no one best moment. Every day, Every day is different. Every day I learn something new about the chimpanzees. Every day it's a challenge. Every day it's excitement. So I always look forward to every day. I think there's a picture I saw of you and uh, I think a chimpanzee was, uh, oh, that was adorable. So you mean you have that special connection with the chimpanzees? Do they ever hug and yes, then? Yes, because we, you know, when you have to take care of a baby chimpanzee as your own child, yeah, they get to know you as their mother. And so they'll treat you like you're their mother. So. So and no then best. there's that bond that gets created. Mm -hmm. And for us, what we do at Ngamba Island as well, because when they come in and when they are so young, you know, we have to take care of them as a mother would. And then eventually it's really tough, both on the chimpanzee baby and us, when we have to break that bond to get them released to the forest area. So it's a very sensitive, you know, period of time that emotionally for the chimpanzee and for the staff who has been the primary keeper in the sense of being the parent, it's actually very hard. So we deal with it really slowly and we take it gradually to help the staff but also the chimpanzee mm -hmm. so that they get integrated to the other chimpanzees and the staff also gets to feel like, wait a minute, this is not my baby. The chimpanzee belongs to the forest, not to me. Oh. Mm -hmm. So I still insist, there's no best of the best moments. Every day is special for me with the chimpanzees because there's always something to learn. Always, there are always different experiences. I can talk endlessly about them. <laughs> and you're talking about that. I think it's time for me to gather all the strength that I can and stop myself from asking about chimpanzees and get back to Miss Lily. Now, Miss Lily, you know, this show is about inspiring women, of course, and also letting them know that they can achieve their dreams. You are a woman that is doing something that not so many people do. Tell us briefly how you've managed to handle the job as a woman and also handle family on the side. I think the starting point is really being focused. Mm -hmm. uh, each and everybody needs to have a vision. You must have a dream of wanting to achieve something, wanting to be somebody in society. Short of that, you know, you'll be thrown in all directions. Different things will come your way, challenges, and you'll be discouraged and give up. But when you have a dream and you have a vision that you want to be somebody and you stick to it and you keep focus, whatever might come your way, you know, you will be able to push through and overcome the challenges and reach where you want to be. It has not been easy for me to get to where I am, whether it is with a career, whether it's family, it takes focus. It takes determination. And with determination, you will be able to overcome the challenges because you know that, well, I might go through this challenge, but after it, I know that I will be a step ahead, you know, towards what I want to do. Um, that is really, really very key. It's one thing I tell my children, you have to dream. Whatever that dream is, you must have a dream. It might look so unrealistic, but you must have a dream. But also, the dreams can keep changing. Over you know, time, uh, yeah. over time, as time passes, you realize, you know, actually, this dream is probably too small 
I need to dream something bigger, or even if you might, you might see that it is actually impossible for you to be able to achieve that dream, and you might come up and dream of something totally different. Key is that at any one moment, you should have something you're looking forward to achieving. You don't dream a day, you don't dream you're dead, yeah? A life without a dream, you're literally dead. So that is very key. I've always dreamt of achieving things, of doing things, you know, to impact the world. My world, it might not be the whole earth, yeah? But, you know, the world, the immediate environment in which I live, Right from primary, I always wanted to impact my immediate environment to the point that sometimes, you know, I was able from my pocket money, pay school fees for those who could not afford it. Yeah? And that has, you know, been part of me. I guess it's also partly how I was brought up by my parents. Yeah. And, um, yeah, key is is uh, have a vision, have a dream, be determined, keep focused. You see, yeah. sometimes dreams can be hindered. You have a family, and then on the other side you have a job. So you may find women outside there have big dreams, have big things that they want to achieve, but they have parents. Imagine like your dream, was your dream, uh, did your parents support your dream? of working with the chimpanzees. Is it something they always wanted you to do? Because sometimes parents may say, oh, I want my daughter to be a lawyer. Oh, I want my daughter to be a doctor. Oh, I want my, doc my daughter to be this and the other. You as a person, how was it with your family? Well, uh, I have to say that uh, I, I didn't have, I, yes, I had the support from my family to an extent, mm -hmm. but to be, able to do what I'm doing. It was a personal decision, a personal determination that this is really what I would like to pursue. Yes, in a way, maybe I was lucky that I didn't have parents who insisted that, no, you have, have to, to do this. law, oh. yeah? <laughs> Which at some point was like, yeah, that's what, you, you know, I to was do. to do. My parents were both you know, uh, medical people. My mom was a nurse, my dad was a doctor. So in the environment I was growing up, you know, it was like, oh, I'm going to become a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. And that was like, it was given. You know, everybody around me was a medical personnel. Um, but in a way, I'm grateful that, you know, I was not pushed to continue just to think that medicine or being a nurse or a doctor was what I had to do. So at the time when I started thinking differently and wanted to do something differently, nobody, my, par my parents specifically did not stop me from doing what I wanted to do. And um, yes, family support is very key, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but also it is not only family. You know, at a certain stage, we become independent, you know, and we have to be able to make a choice of what kind of friends we have to keep around us. Because you either keep friends who will encourage you to achieve your dreams or will discourage you from achieving your dreams. So that is very key. From my life experience, I've had friends who have played a very big role you know, to encourage me to achieve, you know, what I have been able to achieve more than my parents doing it to me at a certain stage. So whom we choose to be our friends, you know, is very, very key as well, especially for, for the young girls, you know. You need to be very careful of who your friends are. Yeah. Are they dreaming like you? If they don't have dreams, then they're the wrong friends you yeah. have. Do they encourage you in what you want to do with your life? If they don't encourage you and they only dis discourage you from pursuing your dream, then they're wrong friends. Look for others. So to me, 
That is another key factor for anybody in any career, in any kind of life that you have to consider. Your network, family, friends, it's very important for you to achieve um, what you need to achieve with your life. We are all designed to achieve something in this life and we can all achieve it but we need to have the focus we need to go for it and we need to have the right support to yeah. be a, nobody can achieve it on their own definitely you need the support of other people yeah. so there are women outside there that are mothers they have dreams their parents, they're, they just a mixture of so many things. And you see there's this other mindset that women, when they get married, they just have to leave so many of the other things they were doing and just take care of the what? Of the family and of course the husband and of course the children. I just want that one thing you can advise these women outside there to put in mind when they're, you know, dealing with all sorts of pressures from different angles. What is that one thing that you've done that has enabled you to take care of your kids, take care of your job, take care of your family? Well, you know, if, if I had to go back and get married and raise children again, I would actually do it a little bit differently. Okay. <laughs> well, I was, uh, I was pursuing career at the same time with marriage, with family, establishing a family at the beginning of my career, which was very challenging, very challenging. But what I have learned through that, and if I have to recommend or advise any woman out there, what is key is to look at the phase of life in which you are, yeah, and prioritize accordingly. Family is very key. Yeah. Career is equally key in the, in the kind of life, trend of life, world over. You know, women have to be career people as well. You cannot just sit and wait. You know, we also have talents that we need to exploit and, you know, get the world to have that that has been put in us you know it could be through inventions could be anything and so we don't need to deny the world you know of that that we can actually do for the world as women as individuals but I would do it differently in that I think I was pursuing both at the same time which was very very challenging but Thank God I had a very understanding husband, mm. you know, who was always there to help, was always encouraging me, and, you know, I was like... It made life easy. It made it a little bit easy, not that easy, because I still had to do with the reality of going through pregnancy myself. He mm. couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I had to breastfeed, and I had the extra burden of you know, running in between home and office, you know, lunch hour to breastfeed, you know, and things like that. Those challenges are there, you know, but again, it's about being focused. I need to take care of my family. At this point, I need to go. And what it calls also is being organized. Being yeah. organized. Being organized as a career person, as a career woman with a family, it calls for a lot of organization. What I used to do when I was breastfeeding, I would pre you know, press the milk, leave in bottles for the morning hours, lunch hour. In the pool? Mm hmm <laughs> Yeah? Wow. Yes. I would express milk from my, breast? from my breast, leave breast milk in the bottles for the baby, you know, which would take up to lunch hour. Lunch hour, I go breastfeed a little, press more up to about, to, to, take, to take to evening, yeah? But that is the sacrifice I had to make because I wanted my children to have the breast milk, yeah? And, and of course it was, work. and then I had to work and my work involved a lot of field work. And uh, again, you know, we always need the support 
My husband was very supportive at those moments as well that I always had an extra helper to travel with me to the field, whether it was Windy, whether it was Kivale, whether it was Mount Elgon, I would go up the mountain, but there's somebody helping me at the end of the day in between, you know, I still have my contact and, you know, my bonding with my babies at those tender ages. But we need to realize as women that, you know, we have to prioritize different things along the way and to create that balance between the family and the career we are pursuing. At certain point, the career is going to it's overshadow to come on top. Okay. Not that you're going to neglect your family, mm -hmm. but you're going to have to give your career more attention than your, family. than your family, but you still need to keep the basic, you know, going with your family. Mm -hmm. And there's that point, especially when it's still a young family, that you're going to have to give more attention to the family. There will, you know, I mean, when I had young kids, and my children were still very young, there were lots of other opportunities that I had to give up, going for further studies, you know, training of this kind, you know, and I would let them go. Why? Because at that point, my priority was taking care of the young kids, yeah. And now, as they, as they grew older, you know, some of those opportunities still come by. Mm -hmm. and at a certain point, I had to like, well, you know, at this point, the kid can stay home. I'm able to catch up and do a little bit more in terms of, you know, building up on my career, whether it is with additional training or opportunity of traveling abroad, you know, for some exposure exchange program. So it's, it's really, for me, the balance is understanding what phase are you at as a family person and as a career woman? There's that point in life where your family is going to have to be priority number one. Mm -hmm. And your career is going to be a little, you know, down. And then there will be that point where you really have to push to build your career as well. And you need to balance that out that with the age of, if you have children, you know, at what age are your children? Do they, if they don't need as 100% attention, then that is the point where you can put more effort on building your career. And then, for me, that is the formula. Okay. Understanding what phase you are in. Mm, and to be organized, that is one thing, very organized. <laughs> So now, what are some of the challenges that you think girls are currently facing in the world, like in general? And how do you think they can deal with these challenges? Well, I, I, I think one thing I have to say from my experience has also been, you know, being a woman in itself is a challenge, especially as a career woman. Mm -hmm. There are cases whereby, you know, you're looked down upon you know, and especially when you rise up and you get to the management level, you know, sometimes you're not taken seriously and you really need to work hard to prove yourself. Mm -hmm. Even when it's so obvious, that you, you know, enough. you're good enough, you will have to provide extra, you know, for the men to, you to know, see to you see that you actually know what you're talking about, you, you're good at what you're doing. So it's yeah, that is one obvious challenge that I have experienced as a woman in leadership that you always have to put in extra effort than a man would. And that should not be a discouragement to any woman rising up in leadership because once, you know, even the men get to know that you have what it takes. There is, you have a value that you can add to them, whether in meetings, in a project you are running together. They will give you the respect. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, it's been amazing. It's still, we're still going on. I must say that I really do not want this interview to end. And a part of me keeps wanting to ask you a few questions about Ngamba. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, I want you to briefly, of course now you see the show concentrates on um, girls, but again we also need to look at the aspect of uh, dealing with the issue of men. Because soon or later as a woman you're going to have to involve a man in your life. You've talked about family and all that. Imagine a scenario, let's just imagine a scenario where you, as a girl, you love this man and you have this career you're chasing. For instance, you, you want to be like probably the most prominent lawyer in the world would ever know or something and then your husband says no. What do you do? What advice? Because people do go through these things. I have gone through that. Mm. I, well, I, I finished my training, you know, my tourism <laughs> training in Europe, in Austria. Mm. And at the end of the training, I was picked among the two students you know, from Africa and offered a job at Disney World in Florida, USA. Mm. And at that point, I was already in a relationship. Yeah. And so it was the most difficult decision I had to make in my life ever, mm. in that I had to choose either to come home, get married, which at that point my fiancé was ready mm. that we take the next move, get married. Or I had to make a choice of saying, you know what, to hell with you, I'm going to America first. I had a job given to me. Wow. So you, yeah. you let so go of the relationship and went for the no, career? No, I actually let go the job and came home and oh. got married. Oh. Yeah, and I don't regret it. Okay. I don't regret it because uh, ever, ever since then I have been to Disney World, Florida. Mm. Mm. You know, uh, I have not worked there, but at least I have been there. I have the experience. I know what it is. Yes, maybe it could have ended up differently, mm. but I don't regret because I have a beautiful family, beautiful children. I wouldn't trade them for anything. anything yeah. So looking back, I think it was it was the best decision I made because so I still caught up with my career. Okay, you know, later on. So in other words, as a young person, so as a young woman, you need to weigh your options where your family, where your relationship, where your job, and pick out the best option. At least that's what I've understood from the advice that has been given to us by uh, Miss uh, Lily here. Yeah? So now as we conclude the show, I know I don't want to go. <laughs> I've really enjoyed this. But as we conclude, how do we get to Ngamba Island? Ngamba Island is um on Lake Victoria, yeah. the easiest access is through Entebbe, uh, from Waterfront Club or Entebbe Zoo, and they have the access can be from either of them, depending on what boat you're booking. Mm. We have our head office in Entebbe, mm. or next to Stanbic Bank in Entebbe Town. That's where our offices are. And uh, we do have a reservation office that takes all the reservations for those who want to visit. We have speed boats, but we also have motorized canoes. And it takes between uh, 40 minutes to one and a half hours, depending on the type of boats you're going on. And um, we, do, we do have special rates, you know, for Ugandans uh, and uh, I would encourage that um, when traveling to Ngamba, you get others to travel with because the boat, the boat transport is normally expensive. So if, if you travel in the group, it becomes cheaper. So families, groups of families or groups of friends, and then it is also more fun, you yeah, know, than traveling, you know, one or two people. And uh, our reservations office is always happy to help. If you are a small group, they can always get other groups, you know, and make up a bigger group that can make it cheaper, you know, for you to travel in a group. And the experience of, uh, that you can get at Ngamba Island besides, uh, you know, 
uh, seeing the chimpanzees, learning about them, enjoying seeing them, how they behave and all that. We also have plenty of birds. You know, for those who are interested, we have different kinds of birds. The experience of traveling by boats, you know, from Entebbe to uh, to Ngamba Island alone, it's a, it's, it's a unique experience. Mm. And I know that some people are scared of traveling on water, but I can give the assurance that for the last 20 years, we have never had any incident at all because we have we have life jackets, we have rain jackets on board, and uh, if it gets windy, if it, the, the, the water is splashing in, you have the rain jacket, and in case of anything, you have a life jacket. 20 years, we have never had any incident, so I do not see it beginning to happen now. So I can give that assurance, and, um, and we have had People booking for birthday parties, people booking for honeymoon, people booking for different kinds of, you know, gatherings and experience at Ngamba Island, and we are absolutely open to that. So we welcome you, come and enjoy the serenity of Ngamba <laughs> Island, yeah. come and have the experience of moving on the boat from Entebbe to Ngamba Island, you are crossing the equator on land, some of, on water rather, some of us have crossed the equator en route to Masaka, yeah. you know, but you can actually, the line passes through Lake Victoria, so when you are traveling to Ngamba, you actually get to cross the equator yeah. on water. And um, Do you yeah. have websites? Yes, we do have a website, www.ngambaisland.org www.ngambaisland.org we with the same name Gamba Island you can reach us on you can follow us on Facebook you can follow us on Twitter you can follow us on Instagram and we have loads of videos on uh, YouTube and it's uh, it's all in the name of Gamba Island so Amazing. yeah Amazing. so guys that was it in this episode of Her Moment. If anything I've learned, if there's anything I've learned in this episode is that as a young person, you need to be organized. I remember exactly how she said it. You need to be organized, you need to have a dream, and you need to be focused at, at all times. I mean, you need to have all your things in focus, be it your family, be it your relationship, be it your career, you need to have it in focus and you need to be organized, I must emphasize. It's been amazing, so if you want to get to Ngamba Island, of course you've had uh, the directions there and also the websites have been given to you, you can always reach out to them. I must say it's been an amazing interview. You learned something? I hope I learned something. But for now I have to go, this has been a moment. <laughs>